Okay, so what I want to share with you today, let me move this down a little bit, is how to use the Bitmoji um, virtual classroom in your virtual classroom as a CT teacher. Now we all know, well, maybe if you've been on Instagram or whatnot, a social media that a lot of the time, uh, new, new fads or phases or trends come out in, uh, in, our, in our education world. And uh, over the summer, this Bitmoji virtual classroom is one of them. And everybody seems to be um, on that high right now. And so I wanted to, wanted to share that with you so that you can have uh, knowledge of it and kind of how you would incorporate that into your classroom. It doesn't specifically have to be CTE. It could be anyone, but of course, we're focusing on that. So I want to share with you a few slides first. Um, if you've already taken any of the other um, um, sessions from uh, the other two trainers today or later today, they, they, that's great. This is just kind of added to that. If not, they also go into depth about how to create the Bitmoji and how to use it, the virtual classroom. So this is just one, and I'm just going to walk you through some scenarios. I didn't get to do all pathways, but I got some. So I'm just going to show you how you can use it. So this is an image just of our school. Some of the images are blurry just simply because, uh, well, I'll show you a trick, but um, I got them off the internet. So here's my little bitmoji that I created, and we'll go through that at the end as well. Um, this could be a slide, so it's pretty much a Google slide presentation that you share with your students and they can click and hover over things to take them to different links kind of like this morning where they gave us the document we clicked on the link and it told us what group we were in that um, session in the dining room it took us to that other sh uh, paper that said that so this is the same these are the same thing so this could be like a portal port per se if in your pathway there are certain websites that your students go to all of the time instead of having them um, always ask, well, I need to make a payment. How do I make a payment online? Well, you can add when, when if you see here my little arrow, if it's over my Bitmoji forehead, it's actually an arrow. So if I click on my Bitmoji, nothing happens. Oops, except it takes me to my next slide. If I click over, or if I hover over my pay icon, you can see it has a little hand. That means that that is linked to something. So if I click on pay, it's going to open up the RevTrack page and it's going to take me to where the student is going to log on and make a payment, whether it be for a CTSO, a t-shirt, fees, dues, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that can be just a quick access, access link. I could do, for example, if I wanted um, for our particular students in cosmetology, they check their hours all the time. So they click on the TDLR icon and then they put their permit ID number here and it takes them to the, um, the website where they can check that. They can uh, do the CTHS Facebook page or if I know I was looking over the summer, some of you guys have some Instagram pages and it takes them directly to that if you wanna do more exposure and celebrations for your course and your pathway. This is taking just a second, so I won't wait for that, but we'll go back to this. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I know for Cosmo, we do the mind tap with Cengage, our textbook. So this little star here is our online textbook, which they will be using pretty much almost every day this uh, semester. So it takes them straight to the login. So you can put that slide show, this particular slide, in your Schoology, and when the students need something, then it, it's here and it's available for them. This one here is the library, the resource center. So if you work, I know Autobody does some things with them as well, so that can be linked as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my next slide. This one is Autobody. Um, very blurry picture, again, I got off the internet, but you can put your little bit emoji here. You can add different, um, things, images to your to your picture. And then here on this TV screen I added, you see how when I hover over it, it has a little hand. When I come off of it, it's just an arrow. 
So when I hover over it, let's say that um, in AutoTech or, or where whatever course you're teaching, you want the students to create a video or to watch a video of some sort. You can have the students click over that video and it links them. This particular one is how to change, uh, do an oil change from, I think, Auto Riley, I believe it is. Uh, but you can link it to, and it's linked to YouTube, but you can link it to any video uh, on the on the internet. If you have a video uh, embedded in Schoology or through your online textbook courses or in your computer or whatnot through Screencast-O-Matic or a recording you've previ previously done yourself, it also allows you to um, link that and add that in. So you have... Hi everybody, John here from O'Reilly Auto Parts. You have Mr. John here as your presenter for the day. Um, as your students are coming in, okay, with those courses. So off to my next one, let's say you have criminal justice uh, for this particular one. So that's a picture of a courtroom. Uh, and you don't have to use the particular picture of your actual space here at our campus. You can change the pictures. I just thought it would be fun to use uh, what I could find. Um, but let's say that you're doing a character study. Or let's say that you are teaching the students vocabulary about different roles that people play in your industry. Okay, so for example, and um, uh, Miss Ryan, don't don't judge me. Okay, I don't know much about law or, or <laughs> policing or anything of the sort, but hopefully I got this right. So I put the people that I thought um, in their particular spots that I thought we're supposed to go there, like say the jury, okay? So when I hover over the jury, you can see that I have a little hand, okay? Obviously each slide would need its directions. So your students would know what they need to do. So you, you can tell your students, okay, we're doing character studies, uh, role playing, or we're learning about everybody's role in the, let me see the chat here. <laughs> no, they're not social. Oh, I should have put little masks on them. I sure should have. Um, so you can tell the students we're going to we're going to learn about the different roles in our um, uh, courtroom. So you need to hover over each character and get a little hand when you click on the that um, image. It's going to take you to a different link. So, for example, when you click on the jury for this particular one. It's going to take you to a government website um, and it's going to, you're going to learn all about the, how the jury system works. Okay. So then from here you can, you know, generate your, your questions or your assignments or things that you want your students to do for that particular, uh, to learn that particular role. Let's say that you want the judge. So you click on the judge. And again, I don't know much about um, the court system, but um, it, this is a Microsoft document that is linked to. So you can link documents and you can have the students read, highlight, um, do pair shares, um, do videos, do any kind of assignments from that Word document, okay? Each one of these that I share, are going to have something different. I try to, to put as much different things that you can do with it, whether it be, um, and these are case studies. So that was the criminal. He was wearing the little orange shirt. So you can do various investigations or case studies through that particular little uh, bitmoji here. Let's say that you want to know what something is supposed to look like. I click on the person that is getting... Um, um, interviewed, not interviewed, I know that's not what it's called, but um, uh, ask the questions. And this is what that is supposed to look like. So you can start talking about where the hand goes, why they use the Bible, who's who's asking, who's holding, who's et cetera, et cetera. So let's say that you're in vet tech and you are doing a table setup for an operation or a checkup or something, and you need the student to see what a table setup looks like. You can link it to a photo image. It doesn't have to be a video or a, a, a Word document. So it can actually be a, a, an image of what you want your students to see. I know in cosmetology, 
we are going to have the students uh, do like, let's say, a facial at home. So maybe this little girl is doing a facial. My student would click on that and then a picture would show up and it would have a table set up of what the student is going to need to set up at home to, to do the facial uh, that they're going to be learning next. So that is an option. Let's say that you have verbiage. So this person here is, I say, is saying, I object. So you're going through your vocabulary words. You can go through and find out the vocabulary definition of various words. You can again link this to your textbook, your virtual textbook, if that's an option for you. Okay. So those are just some things that you can do with that. Okay. For CTE, you guys know that career days are huge for us. Unfortunately, we won't be able to be doing any. Mm, field trips or any of the bringing people in or things like that. So you can do a virtual career day. So for this particular one, I did cosmetology. And so I just added a background of a convention center. I added a little banner and all the words and all the stuff here. So if I wanted, or it does not have to be a career day, it could be just a opportunity, a, a research on different opportunities within your industry. So let's say, or your career, let's say that my student wants to learn about hair. So then she would then, and again, I put an image over the uh, shape over this. So if I have my little hand, it's going to have a link. If it doesn't have a hand, it doesn't have a link. So let's say that she clicks on hair. So then it's going to take her to visible changes and she's going to um, be directed straight to a, an application. So if you are working with students and job placements or um, anything that it's like if you have a what's it called when the student goes out on the on the job field, I can't remember. But if you have something like that where the student needs to fill something out, you can have them go link, be linked to an actual application um, or if you need them to fill something out as well. Let's say with. Um, Let's go to cinema. So if you want your student to learn about the cinema industry or, or um, sec sector within, our, within the industry, then it can link them to a video where it's going to go through and do all of our explanation. This one's not going to show it, so I won't spend time on that. Um, talking about business or science or anything having to do with your industry. Okay. Um, Let's say you're going to go on with skin. I usually take my students on a field trip where it shows them where what uh, different places look like. So you can do virtual tours. There are a lot of places now that, oh, it's not going to work. I apologize, that offer virtual tours. So this particular one, you are able to move around your mouse and, and you can go and walk through this, the, the salon. And there were different explanations of the rooms within that salon. So you can do virtual tours instead of um, just a video uh, or a Word document or things of the sort. Okay. Okay. So our next one that you could do Oh, I clicked on the little guy. My apologies. Okay, so, well, let me go back really quick with the slide. This took a little while to create because I had to find all the bitmojis. I had to put all the, the words and the backgrounds, all the furniture and all of that. So it did take me a while to do. Let's say that you're not that tech savvy or you're just bombarded with a whole other bunch of things that you just don't have a lot of time to sit down and create all of these classrooms and such. That's okay. So another option for you could be, move on to our next slide, something of the sort. Now this is a whole image that I found off of uh, Google Images. And it's got the, the kitchen in the back and these three chefs look, it looks like they're virtually placed in there. I'm not sure, but I literally just copy pasted. This is just one picture. So what you can do, let's say in culinary, Okay, you sometimes bring presenters into your classroom or you go places and you learn about various uh, professionals in your industry. So this particular one, again, if you hover over uh, and you see that little uh, hand, it shows you, it takes you somewhere. 
So let's say you're going to learn about the biography of somebody. So when you click on Mr. Uh, Chef Joe's um, image, it talks, it takes, I don't know about Wikipedia, but it takes them all over um, and it talks all about Mr. Mr. Joe. Okay. Let's say that you want a student to listen to a podcast. So we have Mr. Chef Ramsey here. So when you click over him and you want the student to listen to a podcast, it's got his stuff here. I don't have subscriptions or anything, so it just it took me to the image, uh, the website. Let's say here, let's say you want your student to follow uh, social media of a particular professional in your industry so you can show them and teach them about their portfolio, or you can have them do some research on how the person got started or what their story is, things of the sort. We're going to go here to um, Chef Graham. And it takes you to his Instagram. So there's three different ways that you can incorporate a variety of different things that you normally would do in your, your classroom on a, on a regular school year. But now you can do it virtually. Okay. Um, and the, again, the internet's quite slow today. So we won't wait for all those windows to open, but you guys get the gist. Okay, let's go to our vet tech department. So this here is just, again, it's just literally an image I copy-pasted from the Toronto Zoo on Google. This is a map of their zoo. You guys know that we love, especially on this campus, taking students to a, um, on a field trip. And unfortunately, we won't be able to do that. So let's take them on a virtual field trip. So let's say, and, and uh, to Neil, you guys, I didn't want to name the wrong animal. So the easiest one I could, I could find was the giraffe. So you can see me hovering over here, the butterfly. There's, there's an arrow, so there's no link. The giraffe, there's an arrow here. Or, I'm sorry, a little hand here, so that means there's a link. So for this particular slide, you can just bring this image over, and you can tell your students in the instruction slide, and you can say, okay, you can do a little scavenger hunt or whatnot, make it fun. What animal has the longest, or find the animal with the longest neck or something of the sort, or just find the giraffe. And when you, they click on it, okay, it's going to take them to the discovery channel or the discovery website, and it's going to take them to a zoo, and it's going to give them a little tour, and it's going to talk to the students or show the students a little video of the giraffes. And so that way the student can have that virtual field trip instead of you, you know, taking them physically um, and they can still learn about the animal. OK, and so here's a little giraffes and the students can watch the video. You can have some questions or talking points or assignments or things of the sort. OK, so you can take them essentially anywhere in the world uh, from the comfort of their homes and their pajamas. Um, and so I, the other one I had was a little turtle. So again, you can see the little hand to click on there. All right, let's go to our health department. All right, so this particular one is more like an actual virtual classroom because of the, the all the images. We started with the blank white slide and I added all the images and the words and everything on here, which I'll show you guys how to do in just a little while. But um, this is more of a virtual classroom, not necessarily using pictures from the internet, okay, um, of a building or of a room or of a space. Okay, so let's say you're working on vocabulary, okay? So, and this can be with any pathway. So here we have our little doctor. I tried to find a girl doctor, but uh, I couldn't find one. So, you know, we're working with this one. So in this one, you we're working on uh, AMP, Anatomy and Physiology. And we're matching the word to the number. And you guys, if this is wrong, I'm so sorry. But, okay, so we have our um, words here, our vocabulary words on the board. And the student has to match the letter and the number. Okay, so here we have our little person. Uh, this is not a real person. This is a, a rubber. It's a synthetic uh, mannequin. But um, you can, you know, have the real one should you find a good picture. I tried to find one, but I couldn't find it. It was too gruesome. Um, but these here are the letters. So the student has to match. Okay, well, pectoral. Okay, well, here's a pectoral. And guys, again, that's probably not accurate, but that's as close as I'm going to get. So, okay, um, they can have that as an assignment of matching, and they can write down the actual answer 
um, on Schoology or on a, a Word document or whatnot, when they click on the pectoral or the letter B, again, because it had a little hand hovering over it, it takes them to an actual, sorry if you guys don't like the blood and guts, I'm supposed to warn you, it takes you to the pectoral. So this is, they're doing some surgery, I think of some sort, okay? So you can have images of various um, parts. Uh, again, sorry if you don't do blood and guts, but you can have them look at what that particular body part actually looks like. You can do this with tools, like let's say Mr. Master, you're going to do flowers and you want them to pick a particular flower and see what the actual flower looks like or find out different where it grows or different information on it. Each one of you guys know your actual pathway um, way better than I. So you can just, you know, have your mind just go and um, be creative with a variety of different things that you guys could use for your classroom and for your virtual classroom. So definitely something to have fun with, something that I think would benefit you guys in the sense of, you know, making your classroom fun, different, and exciting. Now, disclaimer, okay, um, this does take time. It takes time to create. It takes time to find the pictures. If you're like me, I want my little letters to be perfect, the perfect font, and all of that good stuff, okay? Um, you can spend a lot of time on this. Let me, let me disclose something else. Is all of this necessary? No, it's not necessary. Just like our little icebreaker at the beginning, it was not necessary, but it made it fun and you learned something and you were engaged and you got up and you went and found your different items um, for, you know, a little bag of chips and candy or whatnot. Um, but that's with our students, we've got to make our virtual sessions as engaging as possible. And I would say maybe if you do one a week or, you know, two a week or however, you know, keep it simple at the beginning and just kind of grow your collection as you go along. It makes it fun for the students and it makes them it makes them engage in your sessions a little bit more than if it was just straight textbook. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I know with um, last semester, um, I had my students doing their their, their sessions, um, and it literally was straight, straight textbook. Um, and they were very bored. They lost interest, uh, and it just it wasn't fun. So I think if we would have had this, I think, you know, it would have gone better. So like Mr. Fleming said, I know it's a challenge, but hopefully it's something that we can kind of embrace and work on and learn a little bit about and grow as professionals and offer it to our students. So that is what I wanted to share with you. Um, it is 11, so we're good on time. Uh, I want to stop right at 1130 because I don't want to, to take up any more of your time that than I was granted.